Welcome back to the YouTube channel, everybody. If you're new, my name is Tanner from AstroTan, and tonight I'm taking a picture of another nebula in space, specifically a rose in space. And the reason I call this is because I'm taking a picture of the Rosette Nebula, and I'm super excited to take a picture of this. I haven't shot it in a year, just like my other targets that I've taken pictures of recently. And I'm hoping to snatch a way better result this year so I can share with you guys an outstanding image at the end of this video. It's been quite a rough one in the backyard recently, so I'm really hoping that this image of the Rosette Nebula will spark my astrophotography mojo again because it's been real tough out here over this long winter, but I think we're finally getting back in the swing of things. Well guys, when I put the hat on, you know things about to go down. Guys, I cannot believe the temperature check that I'm about to tell you guys. It is 52 degrees out here. 52 degrees and I say that with some great enthusiasm because I'm finally starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel winter is coming to an end and yes I am kind of excited about this even though I'm saying that I'm trying to basically speed run all of the winter targets I am excited for spring to come along because the more that spring comes along the more that summer comes along and that is what I've been waiting for with the end of winter comes the introduction to what astrophotographers call galaxy season galaxy season refers to when the millions Milky Way in the night sky in the springtime ultimately is shifted over below the horizon and you're basically looking out into space. You're looking out into dead space. So basically all of that stuff that the Milky Way has in the night sky, all that nebulae, star clusters, all that fun stuff, that is all in our Milky Way. So basically when the Milky Way is gone, that reveals a lot of the galaxies and all the other crazy stuff in space for us to observe. It is pretty fun, but it is also kind of daunting if you have a wide field refractor like I do or a telescope that's not really zoomed in. See, galaxies in the night sky are very small and I mean very small. Even though they're really big in terms of what they contain like us and nebulae, all that stuff, they're very small in the night sky and unless you're taking a picture of the Andromeda or Triangulum galaxy which are galaxies that are closer to us that are pretty big in the night sky a lot of those other ones are going to be really small so you might want to get a larger telescope to get some higher resolution pictures of it so i guess if you enjoy taking pictures of galaxies just as much as i do then this season is perfect for you and it will last a couple months and then cygnus and all the other fun stuff comes back in the night sky for a long period of time and that's where the real fun begins if you're like me though who has a small telescope and loves taking pictures of galaxies we're kind of in the the middle of a roadblock so it's kind of hard for us to take high resolution pictures of galaxies basically our pictures will not look as detailed as what many others would do if they had a larger telescope and that's just the way it is sometimes we just have to accept it but as much as I'm complaining about my telescope in this video I still can get some amazing pictures of galaxies through my telescope despite my telescope not being as much zoomed in I can still sharpen the galaxies when I edit my pictures and it still looks really good so I can't be complaining but to me, I only have a couple weeks of winter left in terms of the astrophotography targets. So this will be one of the last nebulae that I shoot for quite some time before I shift over to taking pictures of galaxies. And before you say anything, yes, they are very cool. And there's a ton of them, ton of them. The Rosette Nebula is an H2 region located in the constellation of Monoceros. I don't know if I'm saying that right still. Monoceros, Monoceros. I don't know. It's roughly 5,200 light years away and it's big and it's bright and it's perfect for taking pictures of. Really anyone can see this nebula in the night sky if you have a camera and snatch a photo of it. You might see this faint fuzzy smudge in the night sky and that could just be the Rosette Nebula. If you're really technical about it, its name is NGC 2244 and you know I already know how I feel about this. I said it a thousand times so I'm not going to repeat myself about it. I don't know why people call it that. It has a couple other nicknames too like the Skull Nebula and if you flip the image around a little bit, you can see why they call it the Skull Nebula too. To find this nebula, just like the Christmas tree cluster featured in my last video, you're going to want to look in the constellation of Orion and just look a little bit to the left of it and you will eventually find the Rosette Nebula. And not too far away from that is, you guessed it, the Christmas tree cluster. All these winter targets, man, and I'm doing them literally in almost March. This is crazy. Because this telescope is so big in the night sky, like I said, 
wide field astrophotographers like myself will have a great time taking a picture of this nebula. My telescope is roughly 448 millimeters to be specific, and that means that my telescope is pretty wide and I can see a lot of space in one picture. With this nebula being so big, I'm going to be able to see the entire nebula all in one picture and I can really observe all the crazy stuff going on in this target. I can see the crazy star cluster that's also featured in this nebula and that's not really common in a lot of other nebulae so this nebula is a little bit special. In my opinion I would give this the official Astro Tan rating of a beginner friendly target to intermediate target. While this nebula is big and bright it's not as bright as the let's say the Orion Nebula or Andromeda Galaxy which are perfect beginner targets. It's on that threshold of starting to basically get a sense of understanding of the targets in the night sky and starting to really challenge yourself as a beginner astrophotographer. But nonetheless, this target is a perfect choice for any astrophotographer out there, and it has to be on your bucket list for winter targets. Like I said, I did this last year and with almost an entirely different setup every year behind. Two years ago, I took a picture of this with my old Canon Rebel T7 that was stock and just its kit lens that came with it and the result was pretty okay for what I was expecting. One year later I got my entire setup that I have pictured right behind me and I also used my Canon Rebel T7 with that setup. It was still stock so that means that I wasn't able to get a lot of the red light that I'm able to get now. So the red light that this nebula had was a little bit held back by that camera but with the proper amount of exposure time or time collected on this target and hours spent on it I was able to get a result that I was still pretty proud of. Now with my camera that is cooled and it's a dedicated astronomy camera which means that, that it's designed for taking pictures of space and getting a lot of that red light in those nebulae. This camera excels at taking pictures of nebulae in space, so it's gonna have some crazy amount of detail collected on this target, and it'll be a way better shot than last year. At least I'm really hoping so. We're gonna pray that it is to the astro gods. I think my setup is all ready for tonight, but I'm just gonna do some final checks before the sun goes down, so I'll see you guys when that sun goes down. Welcome to the nighttime now. We are imaging the Rosette Nebula right now, and we did run into a couple of issues. First of all, the biggest problem is that the moon is very bright tonight. It is a waxing gibbous moon. So that means it's almost a full moon, and just because of my luck, it sits right next to the Rosette Nebula. I mean, I guess not really right next to it, but it's pretty darn close. And that's gonna cause a little bit of some problems, but with a little bit of background extraction and good post-processing, everything should be fine. But you know, sometimes we gotta take risks around here. If you have a light pollution filter to combat this, then it should be perfectly fine. If you're an astrophotographer, don't let the moon bully you. And I'm being serious. The moon can be really daunting in terms of what target you want to take a picture of because the moon will wash out a lot of that nebula or whatever you're taking a picture of. It'll wash it out and fill it with its own light in the sky, but for the most part at least. I'm doing five minute exposures and that is enough light to collect a decent amount of detail in one exposure and I should come out with a very clean image at the end of this video to show you guys. My plan is to shoot this for around five more hours tonight before Ryan sets behind the house that I'm right next to that recently just popped up, so there's gonna be people moving in there soon. This has been one of the best winter clear nights. I've been taking pictures of my setup just randomly because the moonlight and everything just seems well lit right now, and it's just one of those nice still winter nights, and I feel like this might be one of the last ones that I'm ever gonna get. So without further ado, guys, this this is going to conclude the video, minus the image reveal at the end, but I'm done talking for now, and I'll see you guys later. Clear skies.